Hello friends. Thank you for coming to the first summer social of the Canadian Federation of the Blind of Ontario. Uh, there, there's still lots of food up there, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I hope that means it, uh, I hope the food was okay. I, I hope the, the fact that there was so much up there, you know, hope everybody... So, this is, uh, this is the Canadian Federation of the Blind, and uh, there are lots of organizations for the blind in Canada. Uh, most of us are affiliated with one or many, and one of the first questions that we get asked is, um, why do we need another one? Um, so, I'd like to tell you that the Canadian Federation of the Blind is different because we are not an organization speaking on behalf of blind people. We are an organization of blind people speaking for ourselves. We know we are like no other blindness organization because we know that blindness is not the characteristic that defines you or your future. Every day, we raise expectations for blind people because low expectations are the true obstacle between blind people and our dreams. You can live the life you want. That means having the education and the job you want. That means having the family you want. That means pursuing the hobbies and interests you feel passionate about. And experiencing full and equal participation in society. The, the Canadian Federation of the Blind knows that blindness is not what holds you back. We believe that nearly all of the barriers in, to our full and equal participation in society are artificial and can be removed through hard work, ingenuity, love, hope, and determination. We believe in the capacity of blind people to raise expectations and remove barriers for ourselves. By working together, we can reduce blindness to an inconvenience we embrace the tools and techniques that make blind people successful and we support responsible and effective mentoring. If you are blind, the CFB is your government. While anyone can be a member, only blind members can vote on policy, oh, vote on the direction of the organization, sorry, only blind members can draft policy for the organization. Only blind people are allowed to run and hold office. The Canadian Federation of the Blind is uniquely and solely the property of blind people. Without an organization like the Canadian Federation of the Blind to be our authentic voice of blind people and, and characterize the rich diversity of the blind community, we as a society are stagnating. 
only when the blind take the reins of our collective destiny into our own hands will we truly be able to change what it means to be blind in Canada. The CFB supports the Pacific Training Center for the Blind, a newly developed structured discovery training center staffed entirely by blind orientation and mobility in independent living skills and specialized training instructors. We also support the National Network of Equitable Library Services, an, an accessible alternative format library owned entirely by public library systems. And you can get information on the NNELS um, at our back table. We do have some uh, stuff to take to your library if you want to get access to that. I'll just throw that in there. Um, nationally, we are involved in Canada's recently tabled federal accessibility legislation. And we are about to start work on the issue of employers requiring driver's licenses without tying the driver's license to an essential function of the job. We are also researching the quality of audio description in movie theaters and you can participate in that research. Carrie will probably be able to tell you all about that. Hello. Yep, that's coming up. Uh, provincially, we are working on a human rights employment case that may prohibit employers from refusing to hire on the basis of inaccessible workplace technology. We are challenging to protect the rights of a person who was illegally restrained and forced to the hospital against his will because he is blind. Yep. We know that the blind in Ontario have grave concerns about the direction of our newly appointed government. And we are looking for ways to help our members participate fully in the policies, issues that affect us. Considering the plight of the blind in our failing system, we would hardly blame you if you accused us of being not much fun. <laughs> Hey, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Brian? Yeah. There is an impossible amount of work of <laughs> to be done. And right now, there are few hands to do the work. However, this year, this year's convention season, which was extremely successful, by the way, and the growing spark of interest in federationism across Canada remind us that living the life we want includes earning the right to have fun the way we want.
Yeah. Woo! Woo! Bring it on. I believe that every person here has something to offer the Federation. And that the Federation has hope, determination, and real resources to offer you in return. So I'd like to invite you to, um, just in wrapping up, I'd like to invite you to uh, come by and say hi to us. I've, I've met most of you. I've hopefully been able to shake hands with all of you, but I, I may have missed somebody. But I definitely invite you to uh, come see us and pick up some literature. We have uh, current issues of the Canadian Federation of the Blind, Blind Canadian Magazine. And uh, they're print. They're not really for you. Um, <laughs> it's it, online. Yeah, it's, uh, it's online. Yeah, yeah our copy. has a nice picture on the cover if you. Our copy <laughs> is available online. <laughs> but um, what the the intent of them is that if you're going to ophthalmologist's yeah. office or a politician, um, that you would uh, drop them off, and uh, and that 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 would really support the CFB. Yeah. We also have information packages on the National Network of Equitable Library Services, as we said. So if you would like your library to sign up for NELS, uh, please come back and get a package and we will we have many of those to give out. We also have a few copies of The Politics of Blindness. If you haven't read The Politics of Blindness, you can get it from um, any <coughs> reputable on online bookstore like iBooks or um, Kindle or Playbooks. We, we have a few daisy copies of The Politics of Blindness here. If, uh, if, if you'd prefer that, if you want something to put on a shelf. And we also have, um, you can get the politics from Nels and you can get it from the Sella if you have access to those services. Uh, it, the, the, the politics of blindness is, is a huge part of our platform, so uh, I hope you'll find it and read it. If you need help getting it, please let us know. We'll make sure that you get it. Uh, thank you again for coming, everyone. It's great to see everybody here. I really appreciate it. Um, our next meeting is Thursday, third Thursday of September at seven o'clock, and it's a teleconference meeting. I hope that I hope that as many of you as can make it will uh, will come out and join us. That would be the twentieth of September. Good so uh, yeah, well, thank thank you very much for listening to me as I as I plod through my reading. <laughs> It's so good to see everybody out here, really. Okay, so I'm going to try and protect my voice, but I have been sick, so uh, let's see how that goes. Um, so I'm Carrie. I, again, I hope I've met everybody here, but if I miss somebody. Um, so I'm the secretary of the Canadian Federation of the Blind Ontario chapter. And uh, okay, so it's the three of us and we're the executive. Now, uh, Brian to my right here. Uh, we've known each other for about 31 years. <laughs> this is my brother. Just so you know, yeah, Brian and I are sister and brother. And um, <laughs> but uh, it was it was 20 years ago now, this summer exactly, 98, that um, that I met Eric. We we were getting our guide dogs together at Mira in Quebec as teenagers. And um, who thought we'd be here 20 years later? I wouldn't have guessed it. We're revolutionaries now. <laughs> yeah, he likes that word. Um, yeah, so, so we, and we've been here as part of the Canadian Federation of the Blind for a year now. It'll be almost a year now. Um, when Eric first approached me, I was sort of like maybe a lot of you or have been. Um, I knew nothing about the CFB and all I knew was uh, that I had a friend who came to me and, and needed something. and. Um, you want to get this Ontario chapter off the ground? So I said, what the heck? I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> Why not? Um, That's not what you do. You're doing other stuff. I'm doing lots of other stuff. Lots of I'm stuff. a writer, by the way. Um, which is why he wanted me as part of the organization, right? No, I want everybody as part of the organization. <laughs> so it's a lot of work, but I'm proud to be doing it a year later. I'm proud to be the secretary. Since then, we've had um, our monthly uh, teleconference calls because Ontario is a big uh, province and getting everybody together just wasn't practical. Uh, 
And since then, I've, in, I've attended two conventions. First, um, it was the NFB convention in Orlando, Florida, and that was last month. And we were there representing um, Canada. And then back in May, I attended, my first one was the, um, the one in BC for the Canadian Federation of the Blind. And it's good I went to that one first because it was a nice size, manageable size, bigger than this crowd, but I still did all right uh, with crowds and everything. Um, but there's a big difference, a clear difference in the size. So two months later, I didn't expect to be in Orlando at the NFB convention, but there I was. Thank you to the CFB for that. And um, there's a big difference, like I said, from there to here. Uh, I mean, they've had a lot more years to build a government um, functioning for the blind in the U.S. with their population and working for the population of the blind. And we're working on that here, uh, but it all takes time and it's a lot of commitment and a lot of dedication. Uh, and you have to find sort of something in there that matters to you. And I think there's always something for someone if, if, they, if they take a look, uh, which is what we've done. So um, we've worked on a few projects since then. Um, the one that was most important to me, which some of you may have heard already, Eric sort of mentioned it, is um, it's a six month study on the reliability and quality of descriptive video in movie theaters. And I started with movie theaters because I've always loved the movies and I, I'm like, unlike a lot of people, I, I guess, I do enjoy going to the theater still. And I had a lot of years of frustration uh, when I would go and the equipment either would work. Here in London it often works, but I've had some bad luck with it, I guess, because it often hasn't worked for me. And so I've had those experiences where um, I've had turned it on right when the movie starts and they swear it's going to work for me and then it just doesn't work and somebody has to run out to the lobby and the movie's starting and then I have to get someone to describe it. It made me really mad until I got a part of the CFB and then I realized, hey, I have this organization behind me here and um, I decided to take some action. So um, I guess I've started with movies but it's, you know, it can, it can be an issue in theaters, going to plays and a lot of other entertainment on TV. It's getting better but it's not so great yet. Um, so, I mean, a lot of people might have the impression that blind people don't like movies. I don't know. How many here, you want to shout if you like movies or if I'm the only one here? Woo! <laughs> it's not a presentation, it's a conversation. Yeah, well, that's what I'm trying to <laughs> um, But anyway, so that's one of the things I wanted to work on and I had Eric's help here to develop a survey, um, the online survey that we've been doing because I've been so unhappy with this issue for a long time and I believe it speaks to a wider accessibility issue that many movie theaters don't consider. Um, my, my little movie theater in Woodstock doesn't even have audio description at all and I always thought that's like the issue I've had with the, that library service that I've tried to get in my library in Woodstock. They just don't think there's enough need for it so they don't do the work and it's not really that much. I mean with the audio description I think it's getting easier and I know that apps are the future and all that kind of equipment is sort of becoming less of a thing, but... So, um... I think the point is, if you've been to the movies in the last few months, go fill out the survey. Yes, And please. tell us what you thought about the description, so, because I'll tell you what, um, we still have two more set, uh, gift certificates uh, to give away. Every month we've been yeah. doing this, um, and so we, we still have two more $25 movie gift certificates to give away. We needed and some incentive, so yeah. we did this. We developed the survey and decided to give out pass, two few passes every month. Where do we do the survey? Go to cfb.ca, okay. and uh, just keep going down the headings until you get the quality of descriptive video. And there's yeah, a link right, there that you can. Down. It's on the main page. Oh, right. Yeah, it's done a few. Pages. And yeah, I've done my best to try and advertise, I guess, but I, I guess I got to get better at. Well, a AMI has been good to us. Let's oh, yeah, give a nod to you. AMI. Thank you, Kelly, and everybody there. <laughs> So we got a couple more months of that still to go and it's an important issue to me like I say so when the survey does come to an end I'm not really about to just let it go um, I would like to write articles about it once I have the survey results plus I'm just gonna I've got bigger ideas if you want to know come and ask me maybe <laughs> I got plans to keep the issue going because I don't want to just let it go so that's been the best thing I've done um, and I've been proud of that since I started the CFP so now I'm here trying to make more connections and bring us together. And I've learned um, 
that less gets done when we're doing it alone. Strength in numbers, and I'm not very good with numbers, but uh, that's okay. Uh, we do very well in, in Canada and elsewhere. Um, we're making things happen for ourselves and speaking for ourselves. Now, I've, I've traveled a lot. It's an important thing to me. And when you travel a lot, you get to see how good you have it and how others have it. Not necessarily good or bad or better or worse, but um, it's allowed me to see how good we have it in Canada, but yet that we can do a whole lot more to make life equal for the blind. We need to work to make our voices heard, to make our lives as productive as we can. And like Eric's been saying, that feels better when we take sort of control of that more. Blindness is a sense many fear to lose, but we know that sight is not necessary to live a fulfilling life, which I'm sure we all know. We want to make a difference. I want to make a difference in the world. And I think we can. And I'm glad to be here and to meet you and to see all you here today. Thank you for coming and learning a bit more about what we're doing here with the CFB. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Carrie, Carrie and Eric. That was great. They filled in most of the information, so I'm going to keep this relatively quick. <clears throat> I would just like to say that when Eric mentioned the idea of a social a month ago, a month or two ago, that we should do in August, I, I'm not the most confident person. I kind of was thinking, oh, you know, maybe we'll get a dozen people out. <laughs> there are approximately 35 people that signed up to come and showed up. Everybody showed up pretty much who signed up, which is amazing. And it means so much. And while it means a lot to me and the Federation, I think it means a lot more for you. This is not for me, this, this event, although it is. It is, main, is more so for you. Because the experiences that I've had so far in the CFB, only being in a, in a year, have really changed my life. And I, I don't even know how to explain. I, can't, I can hardly put it into words because it's, it's such a different feeling. Now, Carrie and I were both integrated in public school growing up, which I always really appreciated. I felt like I fit in, and it was, it was such a great experience. But at the same point, I felt kind of disconnected from the blind community, whereas I had all-sighted friends and a couple, couple blind friends. I shouldn't say that, but I did, I did not feel connected. And I think part of that is a, is a fear with when you're used to being around a certain group of people and you don't know people in other other areas who are going through other situations, it's hard to get that connection. And I feel like the CFB has really changed that for me. I had a chance, like Carrie um, and Eric was able to attend one of them, to go to both conventions this year. Now I know there are a handful of people here who have been to a convention, and I really truly hope that every single one of you gets a chance to attend both the Canadian Federation of the Blind Convention in uh, British Columbia, which someday will hopefully be in Ontario once we get enough members and interest, and as well attend a convention in the U.S. Because, like Carrie said, it was a build-up. Going to the Canadian one first was great, but both of them really just, they can't be described in words. Now, see, going to different seminars and seeing blind engineers and scientists and people with PhDs and all of that is great, but it's also great to just, you know, be in a place where there are 2,500 blind people and a small segment of sighted people. After coming back from the convention, it was kind of awkward when I went back into the world and said, wait, where's all the blind people? This is, uh, something's wrong here. But the connections you can make and the amount of information you can learn and the mentoring part of it is a huge thing for me. I met people from California, other people from Canada I didn't know of, from Alberta and other provinces, and it's just, it's, it's such a great opportunity. It's, it might sound overwhelming to go to a place with all blind people, with that many people especially, but once you get there you realize everyone, while everyone is still different, blindness is just a small characteristic of who we are, it doesn't define us in any way, you realize that you do have something in common with these people, and it's the, it's the only place where you can be in that situation really to be, you're on the same page as all of everyone there in some degree. So it's just such a very freeing feeling to do and I'm just, I'm just 
so honored that everyone was able to show up today. Thanks again so much. And please consider becoming a member of the, the Federation. It will benefit you. I can, I can guarantee that. And our next meeting is the third Thursday of September, which I believe is the 20th. So have a great night. And taking information. Yeah. <laughs> also, um, if anyone's interested in hanging out after, there's some talk of going out to a bar or something. So consider that as well. You can hang out afterwards. <laughs> now, uh, yeah. 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 Carrie had said something about maybe having a Q&A as well. Well, if anybody any questions, again, I just wanted to thank a few people. I wanted to thank, well, I want to thank everybody for coming. Yeah, I didn't thank anyone we specifically. Wanted, so. Yeah, well, we just wanted well, to thank anybody who brought, so Eric's. Yeah, we need, we, need to thank, uh, we need to thank Brian and Sarah for spearheading yes, this. they did a lot of and that. And we need to thank... Um, the Kajewski family and the Burgraff family. Thank you for, for bringing all the stuff and helping bringing us so much food and serve. games and uh, all all kinds of other things that that sort of made the party happen. Uh, we're we're still getting a little bit used to this. I will say uh, my my Federation reflexes are still a little bit slow. Like um, so, you know, we we um, once things got rolling. We did lose track a little bit of yeah. informing everybody about everything that was going on, and we we're getting we're getting better at that, right? Um, uh, feel that, free to come approaching yeah. us, but we wanted to. Make, it's okay to do some questions, Eric, if anybody has if, one. I don't if know. people, Maybe yeah, if you if you want to do it that way, or we can just all hang out at the back and yeah, talk. I mean, whatever's easier. Us. But sometimes, so, sometimes it's hear, yeah, nice when there's silence and someone's asking answer. something specific. So but well, no we can do that. We can yeah. do that if people want to do it. If somebody has a question, just call say your name and. This is Victoria. Do you guys have a Facebook page? I yes, we do. So okay. it's Canadian oh, yes, Federation yes. of the Blind CFB at the end of it in brackets. Okay. Yeah. Right. We also have a YouTube channel at CFBDOTCA, um, and we have. And it's a, all on the website, I think. A Twitter oh, okay. at CFB.ca. CFBDOTCA. Um, those are our main three socials. Cool. You can see um, if you want to see some of the speeches uh, yeah, from, from convention. convention. Uh, we're up there on the YouTube channel. There's also uh, great information on urban planning, the national guide dog uh, standards issues, um, guide dog issues in British Columbia. Uh, there's a great piece on advocacy uh, done by, what was his name? Some uh, well-traveled, well-traveled guy with an unpronounceable name. He was a riot. Uh, yeah, go, go check out our YouTube channel as, as a starting point. There's lots of great information up there this year. Um, that That's us for social, I think, Facebook, YouTube, and... Twitter. I've recently been put in charge of the Facebook page, and they had, I don't know, 400 likes. I got them at like 100 or more in like a, a week. And then the Vice, um, what is Oriana? Uh, he's Vice. Vice came, emailed me and he said, how do you do this? What is this magic? Magic. I said, it's not magic, Oriana, but thank you. Yeah, I'm a witch. Anyway, any other questions or? Yeah, this is Maggie. Um, I'm wondering if maybe you should tell us, um, those who don't know, um, what the phone number is for calling in on the 20th. Right. Well, yeah, we haven't decided that. Um, well, so we? what we should tell yeah, you. Yeah, there's got to be a better way to get contact. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah no. What, we're what gonna we get should people's tell you. People... Yeah. We we will we will take your information. We will like stand back there and. and uh, take your information. We have if you a lot want. of people's information. Yeah, we have a lot of people here's but, uh, email or, f or number or something, but anyone if you we want don't us to take we'll action to on in. your behalf, especially make sure we have all that we need to do that. But the best thing to do is to send an email to list request at cfb.ca. In the subject of the email, type subscribe and then send the email. And that will get you subscribed to the CFB discussion list, which is fairly low traffic. So that's usually. list, say that again, the email. List, list dash request at cfb.ca with the word sub, uh, subscribe in the subject line. And that will get you onto the list. Um, and the uh, meeting notices are always posted to that list. Um, you can also attach yourself to the CFB of Ontario Dropbox. And that's not a great reliable way. The, the agendas come out on a, on a Monday or a Tuesday before the meeting. Um, so if you have notifications turned on for that, um, that might help you. But it's not super reliable unless you know to check for them on that Tuesday, every third Tuesday of the month. Um, but that's where we post our agendas and everything. So if you, if you want us to subscribe you to that Dropbox, 
please uh, make sure that we have your email and we will do that. Uh, but we're we're in the midst of testing various phone systems right now, so... I like the one last time, but I, I haven't heard what's up with that. I, I don't know exactly what the numbers will be, so please subscribe to that list to follow us and get our like meeting information as it comes out. Yeah. Anybody else? What is the cost to join the CFP? Membership is $5 per year. Um, it's pretty expensive, I know, but... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. See if you can pull hurt. it off. Yeah. Uh, the the, the um, there's two well the easiest way yeah, the it. easiest way that you can do it is to send, send five dollars to treasurer at cfb.ca via interact yeah treasurer at cfb.ca give them my email yeah and uh, so then uh, email your membership information to Carrie. Yeah. We'll give you Carrie's in, uh, no, email address. It's uh, kkherheadache at gmail.com. Well, uh, this we'll is a lot. Is anybody everybody. taking notes? Yeah, no, I don't think anybody's taking notes. We have everybody's information pretty much. We have pretty much everyone's information. Well, just, so we can send out a mass message too with all the info. But yeah, a membership. Some people already. But yeah, yeah. Membership is $5. $5 a year. A year. Any other questions? Okay. or? I have a question. This is Anita. Okay. Um, what are the requirements to be a member of the Canadian Federation of Blind? Um, the requirements are that you uh, pay your five dollar fee and come to meetings. <laughs> All right. That's, that's pretty much it. Again, again, you have to be uh, now. Uh, yeah. So. Um, yeah. That's the main. Yeah. The 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 main the main difference is that uh, full members are blind, and and can vote, and associate members are sighted and cannot vote. We do not make a distinction between blind. So, uh, we do not make a distinction between uh, blind and visually impaired. Um, so, if you, if you are blind, you are a voting member. Um, if, if you are sighted, then you are a supporting member. And we can use all of both. We, we can, can use, yeah, yeah, we can use all of both. Fantastic. I mean, yeah. as you can see. Um, we, have, we have Susan who's been out there from the beginning. Great, great help. Great help. She was, so she's been a great. She's been around. Um, it, like, you a lot can of people see come and go, the, you know, life gets busy or whatever, yeah. And, but yeah, she's been there. Um, I think I heard earlier about teleconferences. Meetings, if I understand correctly, happen that way? Is that a, All in of case? the meetings happen All that way. Right. Ontario is so, so spread out that we can't really... Yeah, that's so why that we're doing makes, this, because we yeah. wanted to see people and, in person. Yeah. It's no pressure, you know, you can call into the meeting and sit back and listen exactly. for the first few months. Like yeah, it's nobody just, expects It's almost to, been a year and I'm just starting to really get into it, so, it, you know. <laughs> Don't don't feel pressured that oh I got if I join I have to like do this 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 this. It's more of a you join and then what you do what you want to do to help out and you you learn from what what we already have to say. So so most people have a phone. Yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, not everyone. But, uh, I have a computer that has a phone feature. <laughs> Any other questions? Feel free if you think of one. As soon as you get up, you'll yeah. find one. It's hard to think of them on the spot. Yeah. But. Thank you for having this event. Exactly. Yeah, guys, thanks, yeah. a thanks a lot. So yeah. Thanks, thanks, for thanks so much for coming. Yeah, that's right. I don't think I would have been able to have so many faces. There's been so many old faces and so many new ones too, but a lot of old ones. Yeah. Well, I think I think we're done talking at you guys. Thank you for oh, your patience. Yes, thank you, everybody. Uh, we hope you had a, a wonderful evening. Yeah. yeah. What? I we appreciate patience. your support. Um, <laughs> thank you.